You're here because packing for long-term travel can be overwhelming when you're not used to it. Lori and I here have you covered because between the two of us, we have 24 years experience traveling six months per year. We're gonna share with you today how we pack for that. You don't want fancy dancy intros. You wanna get right to the meat of the video. Well, we got you covered. We're gonna give you the filet mignon right out of the gate. And that is our number one tippity top bestest packing tip you're probably taking too many clothes. We are the first people to tell you that we're guilty of this. We've been traveling combined for 24 years now, and when we started, we brought everything in the kitchen sink. And believe it or not, this is pared down. We're gonna show you what we pack today for long-term travel, and this actually covers, Ecuador is a good country to give an explanation because you gotta pack for rain, and you gotta pack for beach if you're gonna hit both of those locations, which we wanted to this year. So we've got everything from toques down to flip-flops, right? We'll put some handy links in our description below so you can find these items quickly. I brought two pairs of long pants, one workout, thin workout legging, two pairs of shorts because I'm wearing a pair, <laughs> two pairs of shorts, one poncho, it's so appropriate for Ecuador, right? Mm -hmm. One light, lightweight sweater, two short dresses and one long dress. And then underwear, we pack for about a two week span because I know I'm gonna be washing a variety of clothes on the road at some point. So you don't need to pack six months worth of underwear. You just need enough for like 14, 10, 14 days. Plus if you're on the beach vacation, you're in your bathing suit a lot. You typically don't need to wear underwear, but I have workout tops and, and bralettes and underwear. I have several pairs of socks for either hiking or working out. Then I have a throw, and this is like a full body wrap. It can either be a beach throw if you don't have a towel, or it could just be a, a towel for after a shower. Uh, it can be a wrap, it can be a dress. It's multi-purpose, you tie it a bunch of different ways. Super versatile. Then I have two t-shirts, four tank tops, two long, uh, and three long sleeve tops for some heat. Oh, and my rain jacket, it's a, uh, this one happens to be bench brand. I bought it because it was super thin. It rolls up to even smaller than this and it's uh, waterproof and lightweight and awesome. Okay, well, I'll just pick up where Lori left off and that is my rain jacket. My rain jacket is super cheap. It was a few dollars, but it does the job and it's come in handy a few times in the mountains of Ecuador. This item will probably show up in the bonus section, so stick around till the end because we're gonna talk about things that we would like to upgrade or add to our packing kit that we don't yet have. So that's gonna be a fun part for you. My shirts will include one, two, three, four, five t-shirts, plus this one I've got on, one tank top, two tank tops, uh, one long sleeve fleece kind of throw over, almost a sweater type deal. These two Columbia shirts deserve special mention because they're super versatile. They provide um, really good protection from the UV. They're actually made for fishing. So they're long sleeve, they're lightweight. Mm -hmm. On top of that, they're basically wrinkle free. So they can be scrunched up in your luggage. You can throw it on if you're going out to let's say a, uh, a dinner or a nice night out. These are very versatile shirts. I'll provide links for you guys for these. You're gonna love these. Actually, they make them for ladies too. So they, they'll have something for everyone. Okay, so my pants, I've got four sets of pants. Uh, which I don't wear a lot right now because we're uh, on the coast of Ecuador and it's super hot here. But when we were in the mountains, I was wearing them often. And when we go back to the mountains here shortly, I'll be wearing them again. One set of jeans, one set of sort of canvas windbreaker type pants. I think these are uh, the North Face. Um, so you'll be familiar with them. These pants here are like a, like a tight leg, stretchy workout pant. And then these last pants are also a windbreaker type, super lightweight dry fast, don't wrinkle. I've got two pairs of shorts, kind of like longer canvas type shorts. I've got an impossibly small pair of swim trunks that I wear that are unforgiving. I have um, a full covered swim shirt that we use in the ocean because we're body surfing like four or five days a week. It's our main activity. Lori's got one of those too. We both wear those in the ocean. We can recommend them for protection. I've got four pairs of socks in total, one sort of ankle cut and one traditional cut. I've got five sets of underwear. Like I said before, when we live on the beach, I feel like I'm in the military. I go commando so often. So I don't wear them a lot here on the beach, but when we're up in the mountains, I wear them regularly. And then also for the mountains, I've got a special item that I've been using quite a bit. 
this year and this is a puffy vest that I pretty much wore every day all day in Mindo. This is just an older one that I bought off a friend 30 years ago for $20. We're going to again talk about the puffy jackets that we're going to have and or want in our special bonus section at the end. With the exception of a few items you see on this table here, most of this stuff is well used and or thrifted items. We haven't been investing a lot of money in our wardrobe. On certain items, yes we have, and we will continue to upgrade some of the specialty items. Mm -hmm. But most of the stuff, this is a pretty inexpensive wardrobe you're looking at. Yeah. Like we said before, over the years we've pared down what we pack for clothes. You're looking at an absolutely jam-packed table here, so some of you might be thinking, ah, eh, they still have a problem. <laughs> but this is actually pretty pared down and we use most of this stuff, and we'll continue to try to do better. In a lot of packing videos, people talk about buying your blacks, your whites, your grays, and making sure everything mixes and matches better but for us we're again we're traveling long term we don't really think about it we know that at some point we can buy another pair of shorts on the road or another t-shirt so for me you see a lot of color and pattern because i just kind of like to be a little a little brighter that way one other thing we want to mention is the clothes on our body i touched on it earlier with my pair of shorts here but of course we pack um at the an extra tank top and air's wearing a little pair of throw on workout shorts that he'll talk about too they're not on the table, they're on our body. Yeah, since we're in the show and tell phase, these shorts, you gotta see these guys because they're super lightweight. I wear these when we're on the coast, it's like plus 30 every day. They're awesome. He, you can hand wash them in the sink, hang to dry in, in an hour or so. Which I do fairly often. And uh, so I recommend you pick up yourself a pair of shorts like this. They don't wrinkle, they weigh nothing. They're super cool to wear. Hey. If you're getting value from this video, now's a great time to press that like button. Let's talk shoes. Shoes would be a lot like clothing in that you're likely to tend towards packing too many. From experience, we've learned that less is more with shoes, much like clothes. And this is actually a lot for us, but because we're traveling in South America a lot this year, there's a few key, and we love to body surf, there's a few key pieces that we just could not live without and did not want to buy down here. So we can start with water shoes. We body surf many days a week. We, we can't live without these. Even in the rain, they're good to throw on and you don't care if your feet get mucky and dirty. Mm -hmm. And these shoes, they'll give you some protection. Like if you're wanting to enter a beach that has you know rocks on it that are a little bit sharp or, or debris or whatever in the water, these shoes will add that little bit of protection for you so you can feel confident going in there. Uh, we use these shoes all the time. Like Lori said, we do like to body surf. That's our main form of exercise. In fact, we made the video on it. You can check it out here. The next pair of shoes that we pack is a sneaker. Air's pair and my pair. Mine's just a regular old pair of sneakers that I can work out in, run to the corner store and that kind of thing. My sneakers are a little bit more all purpose. They're kind of like a mesh, Merrill, I think Merrill is the brand. And yeah. they're lightweight, but they're super versatile. They have the Vibram soles, which are very grippy. So I can be active in these. I can, I can be anything from uh, hiking, mountain climbing, because they have the uh, mesh uh, sides, I can take them in the water, which I've done a lot, whether it be fly fishing or walking up a river, what have you, and they dry really quickly. So these are lightweight, good, versatile shoes from Merrill's. I can recommend them. He's a big mountain climber. Yeah. For me, I'm the one who goes out and buys all our food and pays the bills and does little things. So I always pack a pair of flats. Air doesn't have an equivalent really, he just wears his sneakers. But I always pack a pair of flats and I wear them out generally, depending on where we're living. So they're kind of throwaway flats. The next pair of shoes that we had to pack this year, which is kind of our first year, but we recommend them, was a rain shoe. We didn't want to wear our their neoprene and they can kind of tear if you were really walking somewhere crazy on a really scrappy road or something so we needed just a rain shoe to walk with an umbrella in the rain mm -hmm. being in ecuador it can rain a lot yes let's go to flip flops these right here are dear to my heart these are from crocs and so the soles are super comfortable but they're a laid back flip flop and these crocs here i think now have been with us in seven countries and i can highly recommend them they are my go-to pair it's gonna be sad because when they break, I don't know if the exact ones are for sale, but first thing I'm gonna do is jump on Crocs website and look for the most comparable set of flip-flops that I can buy. Totally, and my pair of Crocs is a beautiful green one and I didn't pack it this particular year because I had uh, three or four other just cheaper um, flip-flops and I wanted to like wear one of those out. And I brought it and they broke. Within the first couple, two weeks, I had to buy a pair of flip-flops. So I'm regretting not having my Crocs with us this year 
Yeah, flip-flops are handy, super versatile. Uh, some unique settings that I wear them in is, like our apartments right here, we're living just off the beach right now in Ecuador and it gets super dusty in here super quick. Yeah. So I'm always wearing my flip-flops inside because I don't like putting my feet directly on a dirty floor. Second time I wear them is if we're in a shared accommodation or a hostel, something like that, I'm always wearing my flip-flops in the shared areas, especially in the bathrooms. 100%. All right, so this is as real as it gets. This is literally how we pack for six months away. And for us, um, we live abroad for six full months. So there's some maybe extra things that the regular everyday travel may not pack, except for a few key essentials that you want to have with you. These are some comforting things that we just like to have that maybe we can't find while we're traveling abroad and things that are very necessary for us to have. They just make life on the day-to-day -day a lot more comfortable. First and foremost is medication and uh, vitamins. We pack a few key components. Sometimes we can't find Tums. Our vitamins and our iron pills. We have some uh, joint pain medication. We have some fever and pain medication, which coincidentally enough, we just experienced here in Ecuador. And we really recommend carrying Benadryl with you. You just never know when that dust or that cat's gonna cross your path. <laughs> And then all of our miscellaneous. This looks like a lot of medication. We actually don't take anything, but we've had some dental work. We've had some different teeth pulled. We have some um, anti-nausea pills and different things that we've collected that haven't expired yet. So we just keep them with us. Anti-diarrhea, that's key. Correct. Then we have your basic sunscreens, uh, facial care creams that I love that I can't find while I'm traveling, and then my makeup kit with my mascara and some air eyeliners and lip gloss and all that. Just a quick touch on the bug spray if I could. This is a bug cream, and the reason why we packed this one from Canada is because Canada still has pretty lax laws when it comes to DEET. And when we get down into these Central and South American countries, or even Asia, Southeast Asia, most of the time we'll see insect repellents that aren't strong enough or they're made with something fluffy like citronella. And the mosquitoes in these countries, they drink citronella for breakfast. So we need DEET to keep them off of us. They like our sweet blood. That's true, the DEET works excellent. I think it's over 30%. Sunscreen, we always pack one with us to make sure we have it, um, but we end up having to buy more usually. And not sure if you can see it, but a, a lip balm with uh, SPF in it. So hard to find when you travel. We bring one to two with us all the time. Mm -hmm. Again, my you'll have different things, but I have a vitamin C cream that I'm pretty sure I won't be able to find while I'm traveling. My day and night cream. We have a little baby powder, just a travel amount to get us through. Our odds and ends for facial care, nail clippers, tweezers. And then our- This is kind of important before we move on. This is a general yes. antibiotic. Uh, gel and <clears throat> we seem to use this a lot whether it be on scrapes bug bites whatever we're always using this stuff that's like a polysporin yeah and alongside that speaking of bug bites we bring our after bite cream and you go through it again well depends on how sensitive you are but a bug cream and a hydrocortisone cream just for emergencies is excellent to have with you yeah anti-itch is is huge so then we get into, we bring uh, our favorite rechargeable toothbrush, but we always have a backup with a case uh, on it. And then our toothpaste, we always pack our mouth uh, guard. <laughs> Air has a mouth guard and we have some floss picks that we always travel with and our mouthwash. And then our deodorant, we'll show a better picture of the actual size. We're getting to the end of ours now and I have a full size one, um, but we'll show the picture of it. It's a crystal, so it does weigh significant amount when it's full size but we just like we can share it it's rinsable and we can dry it off at the towel and it's just a little more environmentally friendly and better for us no chemicals going in we pack a hairbrush a pumice stone for heels and pumicing things <laughs> for pumicing things we pack each a razor and some refills and then those are easy to find when we travel and then a nose trimmer or hair trimmer uh, sorry, I forgot to mention Advil is super important. We always travel with Advil. We use them. And then for hair care and whatnot, I usually have an elastic or some clips that I wear and a couple extra clips. Again, those are easy to find if you replace them, but I like traveling with them to put my hair up when it's hot. And then the feminine hygiene uh, items. For me, I just try to reduce my single use. And so I've purchased these reusable uh, feminine pads for that time of the month, a heavy flow one and a um, a lighter flow day, love them. You can rinse them off and wash them with some soap in the sink, reuse them, eco-friendly, and they travel with me everywhere. So I do pack those. 
Then I've got, uh, for in our carry-on, I pack usually a few, again, this is health and hygiene. I pack a couple of nutrition bars to tide us over if I can't find a meal. And then these are my favorite, of course, sanitary wipes. Worries. Or, or antiseptic wipes. And we pack a bar of soap. A lot of people have cool little, um, gosh, dry soaps or little containers. We just use a plastic bag. It's easy, it's cheap, easy peasy. And then a little quantity of cotton balls cotton swabs for the ear and band-aids. Electronics. This is what we pack for our long-term travel in our suitcases. Some goes in carry-on and some goes in our checked bag. So we each travel with a laptop and accompanying charging cable, a large capacity storage device for our media, video and photo, and then some smaller capacity storage devices. We pack a cell phone and charger. I personally pack two kinds of headphones. I pack one disposable kind of one for on the airplane or scrunchy ones for travel. And then I pack a, a wireless headset that I love to just when I'm walking in the street or working out so I don't interrupt air with music and whatnot. Speaking of music, we pack our favorite portable speaker. We had a different one before. JBL was very good. Now we have a, this awesome Bose and we purchased a separate carrying case for it so it doesn't get too scratched up. We'll pop a link below. We love it. You might too. So for me, some of the items that I carry, um, oftentimes when we're traveling in these countries like Asia, Southeast Asia, Central South America, um, Mexico, we'll have situations where the outlets aren't thought out like you're used to in the US or Canada. And they're in spots that you're, you're not really expecting, or there's very few of them. So I like to pack uh, a one to three in this format, it gives me about two feet of extension. And then I like to uh, pack this one that goes right into the wall, which is also a one to three. It just gives you more versatility for how many devices you can plug in when you find yourself in a scenario that there's not enough outlets to go around. When we're in certain countries, uh, here in Ecuador, the plugs are the same as you're used to at home. But when we traveled to Australia or Southeast Asia, some of the plug configurations were different. And so we will often carry one of those multi-plugs for countries like that. We pack a HDMI cord. This one here I think is six feet long. We actually pack two of them and we pack um, female to female barrel connectors so you can plug two of them together. Oftentimes the HDMI cords that come with the TVs that are included in your accommodations are short. So we like to lengthen these out and it just gives us more versatility and they weigh almost nothing. So HDMI cord. Or they don't, the accommodation you book doesn't have an HDMI cable at all, just a TV on a wall. And so you want to, we want to play something from our laptop and connect it and have a bigger screen. So those are awesome. Good point. I pack these uh, sort of upscale little bit Bose headphones. They're not the top of the line. I think they're around a hundred bucks or a little bit less, but the reason why I pack them is because they have the ear pads that cover my entire ear. So they do cancel out some sound, but more importantly, it gives me more of a rich music sound for when I'm working out or uh, if I'm editing videos, for example, I'll get a better representation of the sound that's actually happening through them. So these are um, gold for me. I can recommend those. We also pack a GoPro, which you're watching this video on right now. And the GoPro is a good all purpose camera underwater, it's raining, whatever, you can take it with you, it's small. It does a lot of things for you as far as preserving your vacation memories. So we can recommend traveling a GoPro, whether you're making videos like us for YouTube or not. The GoPro is right now sitting on a selfie stick, which is a mini tripod. We find it super handy. We use it all the time. Again, even if you're not making YouTube videos, if you wanna do like selfies or you wanna frame up a shot and then you get in it and, and it's all properly framed, this little tripod will do great for you. Also comes with a remote. So you can walk away from it, press the remote on your phone yeah. and it will take your picture for you. So it's handy. We love our selfie stick. Yeah. Still in with the GoPro. Uh, one thing about them is the batteries are pretty short lived. They're gonna run 20 to 30 minutes and then they're gonna poop out on you. So we recommend grabbing extra batteries for your GoPro. I think we travel yeah. with four. Yeah. We, could even, we could even upscale from that. And then of course, you're gonna wanna charge those batteries and so this is a triple barrel battery charger. I think it's from company Teleson and it charges GoPro batteries and universal batteries made for it. And if you want to find, if you want to find some of these products for yourself to purchase, we'll make it a little faster for you and pop some links below in the description. Yeah. 
Uh, like Lori mentioned, we travel with cell phones. Uh, no special mention there other than we don't really use it. We don't use it as a phone when we're traveling. We turn off all those capabilities. We use it as basically a GPS, figure out where we're at, and we use the camera, of course, and the video um, capabilities. This power bank though, this is kind of like the Coupe de Gracie. This is magical because this little guy here will charge up both of our cell phones probably four to five times oh, so uh, if we're ever out and about, which we often are. It will also charge up our GoPro batteries, which we found out in a pinch. So if we run all of our GoPro batteries dead when we're out, this thing will give us life, put us back in business. This is a super handy device when you're out and about and you can't plug in anywhere. It will really bridge the gap for you. This little drone here provides us a versatile, small aerial camera that creates professional style, professional quality video and photos. And we use it, of course, to make YouTube videos, but also it creates an excellent way to preserve unique shots of you and your vacation. So we can recommend that you travel with one of these, whether you're making YouTube videos or not. I think we probably would. This one here is the DJI Mini 2. And for the price, which is reasonable, we find it creates excellent memories that will last a lifetime for you. Mm -hmm. These are the items we currently travel with as far as electronics go, but you will see us in the bonus section at the end of the video talk to you about some of the things we've learned through our experience that we would like to add to what we pack in the electronics family. Stick around, you're gonna like those. Kitchen section. It's a little sad that we actually need to pack a few things for a kitchen, but it's just better for our comfort level whenever we arrive at a, we don't do hostels very much, but a hostel, an Airbnb, a rented apartment, and there's just not that tool and I cook a lot. So I'm gonna get into some of the items that Aaron and I, that we pack when we travel for long term. When you travel for long term, there's certain things that you just like to have around for, for comfort. So for us, we uh, drink a lot of bone broth. I pack my own cheesecloth because it's very hard to find. So I pack my own cheesecloth. Uh, again, cooking a lot or baking a lot. Silicone spatulas are hard to come by. They're usually not in Airbnbs or rental properties when we book locally. A little pair of scissors comes in super handy because it's inevitable we'll be trying to open a bag with our teeth. So I use these all the time when we move into a new place and they're kind of bluntish end and I pack it into my cheesecloth. So it's a little bit safe there in my luggage also. Things that have come in handy, more than handy, but daily useful is my own cutting board. It's not a disposable cutting board, but you can see how thin it is. I slip it into the back sleeve of my luggage and it, it's no, there's no weight to it. And I leave it at the last place that we rent before flying back to Canada. And then I buy a new one. It's brand new and clean and white. And then in the following year, when we travel away again, I pack it into my luggage. Um, so I always have my own very thin, super lightweight cutting board. Love it. Speaking of cutting, the knife situation in rental properties is dismal. So we found a secure way to, to actually I found this pre-packaged. It's a little paring knife. So it's not a big chopping knife, but it's something to get me through cutting into a piece of fruit if I need it. And then for years, Aaron and I used the Scotty sharpener. He's a big fisherman and we fillet fish and he needs to keep his knives really sharp. This it's lightweight and we just pack it with us everywhere we go now. There's so many times we get into an Airbnb and I go to chop something and it's, it's notched. The, the flat edged knife is totally notched. So we do our best to get that working for me. Would you say we've had to sharpen the knives in our place 100% of the time we move into it? Yes. I would say 100%. 100%. Some other little odds and ends that I just find for my own comfort, batteries. If, if a wall clock dies or a table lamp is battery powered for some reason, we just found having a few AAA and AA's is handy, uh, but less and less as things are USB. I pack a little bit of tape, again, just handy to seal up a bag of something if we're gonna be traveling again. A little nail scrubber because I, I do uh, wear gel nails and for me, that's just totally awesome to have. A few bag clips. I know that sounds just so dumb, oh bag clip, but oh man, I buy a bag of oatmeal and there's no way to seal it up. So they're just invaluable or a bag of snacks or chips or something. We use those a lot. A lot, yeah. An, an extra pen, it's incredible when that comes in handy and a Sharpie because it's permanent. I can write on anything if I just need to mark it. A lot of times we rent a place with a stove that has just um, Celsius written on there and I need Fahrenheit or vice versa. And so I've often asked the landlord, can I, can I um, put the two languages of uh, temperature on your, on your oven and then I 
then it's permanent. A few uh, other things are cloths. This one's looking pretty ratty, so please excuse the video. But what these are, are those, um, it's almost, not paper, but it's... They call it a J-cloth? A J-cloth, and they come really big. I just cut them down and take four or five with me for the winter. So this one, it's nearing its, its end of life, but I just wanted to show you, but the, and it's my last one. So they are nice, they're clean and flat, and they're kind of disposable-ish, and so love them. Because that's another common weak point in accommodation rentals that we've found in Asia, Central and South America, is the rags or the cloths that they supply are universally terrible. Linens. Or, or they often provide a sponge, and I'm like, oh, who else has touched this sponge? So for me, I just pull out a clean one. I know it's, it, that's just us, anyway. Same thing with the cleaning cloth. I'm a little um, nerdy when it comes to moving out of places. <laughs> I clean it from top to bottom. I just try to do everything I can. So there's never enough cleaning supplies. So I just pack one microfiber and then I know I've got myself covered. I hand wash it, dry it, and it lasts a long time. Same with the hand towel. There's never enough hand towels or sometimes not any. And what do you do? You've just gone to the washroom, you wipe your hands, there's nothing to dry your hands on. So I always pack just one little. And oftentimes this doesn't even come out of the bag. The, the suitcase maybe for months, but then you just rent a new place and you need it. So the last thing, uh, two, two last things, a little bag of spices. Some years I don't take any, uh, most years I do. There's just certain things, uh, basil, um, chili powder, the garlic powder granules that I like. There's just a few things that are tricky to come by and I like to move in and I like to start cooking right away. So mm -hmm. I generally take whatever's left over from our life in Canada pack it up and if it makes the weight and there's weight allowance to take it, we take it. And we're happy to try to squeeze in those spices because once Lori gets going in the kitchen, she almost universally makes better food than we can buy out at the restaurants. So that's one of the reasons why we eat in our own accommodations almost all the time. You're you just saying that. Okay, well, speaking of making food, this is this comes with us with us in our luggage all the time. It's it's on the weighty side, but I can't live without it. Uh, again, wherever we rent, there's either a really underpowered blender or some nothing to blend a smoothie with, and we love a quick margarita some nights. Virgin, <laughs> virgin, virgin margaritas, of course. Yeah, right. Uh, or a smoothie in the morning with frozen fruit. So this immersion blender, you just take it apart, click it together, and it's power. Powerful and awesome, totally recommend that. Mm -hmm. And then I think uh, for food, we uh, we do eat sugar, but in our coffee, we like stevia in the morning. And so we pack our one big bottle lasts us more than six months, but then I know I just don't have to go out and buy a replacement product for a really long time. And good luck in rural Central America or South America to go find, you need to be in, at a bigger city to go and find stevia, right? So we put a couple drops in our Yetis, which we love, mm -hmm. um, to drink our coffee in the morning, our favorite hot beverage. Yeah, and in addition to our hot beverages, these Yetis, little pro tip, is that if you're traveling somewhere warm, uh, these will also keep your favorite virgin cocktails cold for hours. Like I can put three ice cubes in a Yeti, and in plus 30 or plus 33, a couple hours later, you still have ice cubes yeah. in there. So in addition to keeping your coffee hot, more importantly, when you travel to warm areas, keeping your cold beverages cold, big tip. We use these every single day. Yeah, we love them. And, and even on the subject of coffee, uh, oftentimes we'll have our first cup of coffee hot in the morning in these warmer climates, but then by the time it comes to our second cup of coffee, it's already quite warm outside and in our accommodations. Mm -hmm. So we switched to cold brew and the Yeti will not only keep the hot hot, but it'll keep the cold brew cold. So it's just like a multi-purpose. You need to get yourself an insulated cup if yeah. you're traveling long-term. So on that note, how do we make a good cup of coffee no matter where we are in the world? Believe it or not, a lot of these countries that you traditionally see uh, beans coming from, like, oh, okay, what's the coffee countries? Colombia, mm -hmm. Costa Rica, Mexico, all these places that are trendy to buy your beans from in North America. When you actually travel down to these countries, you'd be surprised how hard it is to find any sort of commercial coffee beans that are just whole bean that you can grind yourself. Usually when you go into the grocery stores, you're seeing powdered coffee, instant most of the time. That's just not a coffee culture, which is surprising. Now, yes, you can go to a hipster cafe and buy a $5 cup of coffee and get a decent one, but 
You know, Lori and I didn't retire at 35 and 37 from spending $5 cups of coffee all day every day. So we want to buy our own and make our own. So what products do we pack to make a good cup of coffee, whether it be hot or cold brew, no matter where we are? You guys are going to love this. Let's start with the workhorse of making a very good cup of coffee, no matter where you are. And it's this hand conical ceramic grinder. And we travel with this thing everywhere. It's not so heavy and we love it. We will uh, put a link in the description below, but this allows us to grind uh, whole beans if and when we can find it and we'll search around for it, but grind whole beans fresh whenever we want. So we're using this every single day. We'll grind fresh ground for our hot cup in the morning and we'll also pre-grind and make a batch of cold brew that we steep uh, for a day before we drink. And just a little side note, um, the top unscrews and the handle comes off, so we just slip it inside one of our mugs with our stevia also. Right. And so for packing, you can see already removing this and putting it in here. It travels really well. Yeah. So in conjunction with that, um, more times than not in our accommodations in these countries, you're not going to move in with something like uh, a bodum or a press. So how do you go ahead and press a fresh cup of coffee when you're on the road? Well, our solution is this AeroPress right here. And uh, it makes about, uh, you can make espresso with it, you can make normal cup of coffee, all different kinds. But we find that when you fill this full, it's about a cup of coffee, it's about this full. Yep. And then I add a little bit of water to mine uh, to make for a full cup. And so it's very easy operation. You buy these little filters for it, separate, disposable filters. Can you take this? Yeah. Put that little filter in the, the bottom. The bottom screws in to the AeroPress like this, put your grinds in, pour your water. I usually wait five minutes because I like a strong cup of coffee. Once it's in there, good and strong, put it on your cup, put the top in here, and then you just press everything through and your coffee goodness comes out the bottom. Enjoy. This thing here is very lightweight. It's some sort of really durable, I'm guessing a plastic type, but we've been really happy with this AeroPress since we bought it and we use it all the time. And that's in a nutshell how we're able to make a very good cup of coffee fresh no matter where we are in the world. Not to mention cook and blend and strain things. Mm -hmm. Now there are a couple of things that we would add to our kitchen uh, ensemble here. And the good thing for you is that in our bonus section of the video at the end, we're going to talk about what some of those products will be. Miscellaneous. This is a fun section to talk about, especially when you travel like us, which is we're away for six months and we're usually going to one, maybe two locations, a lot of the time within the same country. So we get to pack a lot of miscellaneous items that really make our life easier because we're quasi living in these places. So we want to do those things to make our lives more comfortable. Right, Laurie? Yeah, quasi, we're fully living in the, in the country. So these are miscellaneous items that you need to have with you, for instance, and then some extras that work for us. You can consider them for yourself. So the needs are passport, photo color copy of your passport, you never know, and then copies of your uh, vaccinations if you need that, or travel insurance. So keep those with you in handy. And then our extras for travel is a neck pillow. Um, and by the way, we're gonna go through Lori's items first and then we'll do airs in a minute. So I have a neck pillow. We love water sports and being under the water. So for us, it's a heavier, bulkier item, but we love having our own gear. We can just walk off the beach in any location and go and check out underwater. So we always have fins, a snorkel and a mask with us. I pack a foldable, reusable, a little bit insulated shopping bag also. Again, in these countries, single serve or single use plastics is a real big epidemic. So we just, our belief is to do whatever we can. So I just bring a re -shop, uh, reusable shopping bag. And then I get my nails done if I find a salon, but often we're in a spot where I can't do it. So I've just learned a few things on my own and I bring my files and my products and my light and drill to do my own gel or acrylic nails. I have a, a purse that I travel with with some extra key rings and uh, clips and things when I carabiners and stuff. You never know when those can come in handy. But my bag that carries my wallet and everything while we travel. Hats, I have a little more this year because Ecuador has a few different climates and we wanted to be prepared. So I have my visor for the sun, an everyday workout or wearing hat, and then my tube to keep me warm, which came in handy in the mountain areas. 
I carry a nice assortment of mostly costume jewelry, so it's bulky and a little bit on the heavy side, but I, that's just one area that's good for me to change up is my jewelry, my earrings mostly. So I carry a water bottle with me. Again, it's fairly lightweight, but it's aluminum, so I can wash it and it's sort of reusable. Then Aaron and I carry a, an assortment of workout gear and it's sort of a shared item, but we carry four different varieties of workout bands. Aaron will explain the ball. I carry workout gloves because uh, my, my skin is just kind of delicate and so I carry these cool workout, workout gloves. You slip them on and then you can not damage your rings or your fingers. And our yoga mat, which we use for stretching and yoga and Pilates and stuff. Miscellaneous for me. There's a couple of overlaps, this one being obvious. I pack one too. <laughs> this thing here, our snorkel gear, um, I just want to say that I like having my own gear. In addition to what Lori said, I like having my germs on it rather than going on a snorkel tour where 400 people have had that snorkel in their mouth this week. It's mm -hmm. just my mouth and I like it, so that's why I pack it. Workout stuff Lori already covered, but this little ball in here I like to use as a low cost massager. I put this on a trigger point or muscle knot and I lay on it and it works great to release that short term. Uh, one of my nerdy hobbies is I like to fish and more specifically fly fish. So I pack this rod here. It's uh, broken down into half, but it's an eight foot rod made by G Loomis and this Nautilus reel. I'll put a link in the description below if you wanna see a peer into my strange addiction, which is owning and traveling with a fly rod that's worth more than my Jeep in Canada. <laughs> Anyways, sometimes I even use it. Packs into this handy dandy travel tube. It's like, I don't know, what is that? Three, three and a half feet long. And then I just buy luggage to match and you'll see that in the packing section a little later on. Very lightweight, but it adds a lot of fun for me. Uh, I carry a few accessories, line and stuff with it. These are the flies made to look like fish that I fling around. It's nice for me after a long day working on the computer to run down to the beach and wave my rod around. Another nerdy hobby that I have that I enjoy is uh, birds and specifically hummingbirds. If we're in a country that has hummingbirds, I'm always traveling with these feeders. Ecuador is the center of the hummingbird universe, so obviously I have them. If we're in Asia or something, doesn't have hummingbirds, these will go out. So I carry three of these, a couple other styles, uh, and they've come in handy a few times this year already. Uh, then these single serves here also we use because they can stick on a window, you can hold them in your hand, and we've had lots of good fun with those so far. Okay, a couple of other miscellaneous items. I like to carry this uh, butane lighter or torch because quite often you're renting accommodations that have gas-powered stoves and nothing to light them with. So matches would also work, but I like this one here because it's gonna light in any condition. Okay, if it gets wet, whatever, windy, it's still gonna light. The day to night cycles here are all the same. Basically 12 hour days in all, not all, but most Central South America, even Mexico. It doesn't get light until 6.30 and then it's dark at 6.30. So oftentimes, whether it be we're staying up a little later or I'm getting up early to go bird watching, it's dark. This headlamp here has saved us quite a few times in those scenarios, so we're happy to have it. These hair clippers we pack because we're often setting up in remote areas that don't have any services, never mind a barber. So these things have come in handy. Sometimes I don't end up with the highest end of haircut, but it's shorter, so we can recommend those. We carry binoculars. Uh, a lot of times you'll be able to see things in the ocean or mountains or even birds and hummingbirds a lot closer. I carry, these are kind of a mid-grade uh, and they have been invaluable many times. We carry this small travel umbrella, which in basically all these countries has a pronounced rainy season. And so Ecuador and many of the other countries we've lived in, these have come in handy. They're super small and lightweight, so we can recommend them. Speaking of dry and staying dry, this bag will keep some of the things that you value and need to be dry, dry. So it's a um, dry bag, a 10 liter size. We, th we do things like throw our camera equipment in here if we're going on a boat tour or it's raining, uh, clothing, an extra change of clothes, maybe some food or whatever. Keeps your dry stuff dry, recommend. Weighs next to nothing. The last item for me is kind of the Coupe de Gracie. I kind of want to put it under fashion because I think it looks really cool, but it helps me to keep my money close to me while looking stylish 
And so I always carry this money bag fanny pack full of money. <laughs> so this is the miscellaneous section, guys. The fun part about this is because we travel so slowly and we stick around in a location for three to six months, we carry huge check bags with us, like the, the maximum allowable size. So this allows us to expand this section, including items with us that really make our lives more enjoyable, more convenient when we're living away from home in these other countries. Stick around because in the bonus section of this video, we're gonna be talking about things we want to add to our miscellaneous section or will be adding very soon. You're gonna like some of the products we talk about in there. Welcome to the bonus round. This section is gonna be a lot of fun. We're gonna to talk to you a little bit about items that we would like to add to our travel kitty and or will be adding very shortly. The first one I wanna talk about came out of the time we were living in Roatan, Honduras a few years back. The place we rented there included a portable projector for us to enjoy our movies on and man, did we enjoy it. it. Pretty well everywhere we rent has a huge white wall in it that has no art on it, like this wall right here, for example, that you can set up a, a mobile projector back there and really bring the cinema experience to your travels. So. First and foremost, we've been threatening to add a portable projector to our travel kitty for about six years now. A long time. Yeah. We're going to be doing that. Yeah. All right, second item that we're going to add is, for me, a proper rain jacket. The rain jacket I carry now is just cheap. It doesn't fit all that great, not so compact. So I'm going to level up my rain jacket game and buy something modern and decent. Still on the subject of clothing, when we travel to places like South America or large countries that have elevation changes, you need cold and warm weather gear. And so I've been really wanting a nice lightweight base layer, or some of you might know them as man tights. And I'm going to add a decent, good for travel, durable set of base, a lower body base layer for myself. Still on the subject of warmth layering and clothing, like I showed you before earlier in the video, I did pack a puffy vest. It's large and really puffy. I'm, uh, I might even gift that to someone on our way out of Ecuador this year, but what I'm going to do when I'm back in Canada is I'm going to buy more of a modern, compressible, lightweight puffy jacket for myself, probably with a built-in hood. Yeah, I think there's many of them on the market. We're gonna get a his and hers, so you can roll them up really tight, pack them really small, they zip up even so that's definitely going to be added to the list yeah we'll get good use out of those whether we're traveling abroad or whether we're home in canada okay an item on my list that i'm definitely going to be adding either one or two depending on what our our suitcase allows for weight and and space we're adding a lightweight fast dry microfiber towel if not two if not exactly one or two of those the second item that Aaron and i would add to our kit is a toiletries bag with a hook on it that kind of folds down We've gotten into a different kind of a case that zips and it's a bit clunky and chunky because we pack a lot for six months of long-term travel. But something with a hook that I can hang on a door or behind a door would be great. We often rent a place, even if it's our own private apartment that has this micro counter around the sink with no space to put our, even the smallest little toiletries on. So something that hangs would be a good addition. Mm -hmm. Still in line with what is lacking when you rent a place in a lot of these countries, we're going to be shopping and adding maybe one or two multi-tools and they're gonna have to include a, a set of foldable or separatable eating utensils, forks, knives, spoons, because believe it or not, we've rented places, moved into places that don't even have a fork, spoon or knife. So gotta get that handled. The other thing that it's gonna have to have this multi-tool is a corkscrew for obvious reasons. The other thing I'm going to be adding or would like to add very soon is a proper gear bag for our electronics or cameras and cables and such because I carry just an old backpack. All the stuff goes into a couple plastic bags. It's really bad and I wanna have a bag that has these Velcro adjustable sections so that I can properly put the gear in there for fast takeout and put back and it stays organized. So I'll probably be up upgrading either a, a backpack style gear bag and or a separate backpack probably somewhere in that 35 liter range yes the last thing on our list that we will be adding is a very small squishy lightweight door wedge probably rubber rather than a piece of wood although you know a person could just go outside in the jungle and grab a piece of wood and wedge it under your door but to have our own i've seen some really cute ones again lightweight and it would just always be ours to add that added security to our apartments when we rent them yep 
those rubber rubber ones, for example, you wedge those under the door, and even if someone was able to bypass the lock, it's very difficult for them to get any momentum on opening that door with a rubber door wedge underneath it. Let's get packing. Hey everyone, if you've made it this far in our video with us, first off, congratulations. But secondly, here's a little bonus reward for you. We're, we forgot to mention a couple of things and we're gonna give them to you now. A few tips that are tiny, but are gonna really come in handy for you. The first one is a decent set of earplugs. When you're traveling to basically all of Asia, all of South and Central America, these are going to be gold for you because it's so much noisier than the country you're used to living in. There's always a dog, a donkey, a horn, music, whatever. And these upscaled silicone earplugs, they, I don't know what we would do without them, but they've made the difference between not sleeping and sleeping many times for us. The second item is this neck buff that I use for, a mul for multiple reasons. One is to uh, cover my face when I'm out in the middle of the day, whether I'm walking around or I'm fishing or whatever. But secondly, and mo more importantly, is that pretty much everywhere you sleep is going to have a lack of window coverings and or you're gonna have a 1 million megawatt LED light shining right into your eyeballs when you're trying to sleep. And so I wear this as an eye cover uh, when I'm trying to sleep and even on the plane. So this thing I use all day, every day for multiple reasons. The third thing is, I've never heard this talked about in any of these packing videos before, but we pack this lightweight digital scale for our checked on bags because usually what happens is those bags have let's say a 50 pound limit and this scale here allows us to pack super precise and get it right on the bell every single time. So a little tip that works great for us. Yeah, we use it every time we move on an airplane. The last thing that we pack that we both use, sometimes you have a trusty back scratcher traveling with you, but sometimes you just need to do it on your own. And this is so amazing. I found it in just a cheap store at home and it's metal. So it gives a good scratch and it's compact and I keep it on our bedside or in the bathroom and it's just handy to have travel size. Well, that's pretty well our whole lives in four little bags. We're all packed up. Maybe we should go somewhere. I'm ready to go. We encourage you to watch this video next.